is in my hand. What do I do with what I have been through? See, what happens when you go through things in your life, See, the prodigal son lost everything. Losing everything, he had nothing. And nothing made him realize the worth of everything. See, what happens is that your life is defined by your experiences. If you apply to college today, you, at the end of the college application, they're going to ask you a question. And that question is, what experiences in your life have formed and have defined who you are? Because the college wants to make sure before you come into their hallowed halls that you have some worth. And your worth is not only defined by your GPA. It is defined by the series of events and things you went through to get you where you were. Because some kids are going to go to that college because their mama wrote a check. But there are some other kids who didn't have a mama and didn't have no daddy. And they had to work three jobs just to get to where they were. And your story is important when we consider your application. You better understand that your story is important when we consider your application through all of that. And I, I'm, I'm closing, but through all with my first point. When uh, So the application comes in. And so this young man to NYU, New York, University of New York, this is the response that he wrote to NYU. I am a dynamic figure, often seen scaling walls and crushing ice. I've been known to remodel train stations on my lunch breaks, make them more efficient in the area of heat retention. I translate ethnic for Cuban refugees. I write award-winning operas. I manage time efficiently. O occasionally, I tread water for three days in a row. I woo women with my sensuous and godlike trombone playing. I can pilot bicycles up severe inclines with unflagging speed. I cook 30-minute brownies in 20 minutes. I am an expert in stucco, a veteran in love, an outlaw in Peru. Using only a hoe and a large glass of water, I once single-handedly defended a small village in the Amazon Basin from a horde of ferocious army ants. I played bluegrass cello. I was scouted by the Mets. I am the subject of numerous documentaries. When I'm bored, I build large suspension bridges in my yard. I enjoy urban hang gliding. On Wednesdays after school, I repair electrical appliances free of charge. I am an abstract artist, a concrete analyst, a ruthless bookie. Critics worldwide swoon over my original line of corduroy evening wear. I don't perspire. I am a private citizen, yet I receive fans. Mail. I have been called I have been caller number nine and have won the weekend passes. Last summer I toured New Jersey with a traveling centrifuge force demonstration. I bat point four hundred. My deft floral arrangements have earned me fame in international botany circles. Children, trust me, I can hurl tennis rackets at small moving oblets with objects with deadly accuracy. I once read Paradise Lost, Moby Dick, and David Copperfield, David Copperfield all in one day. I still had time to refurbish an entire dining room that evening. I know the exact location of every food item in the supermarket. I have performed several covert operations with the CIA. I sleep once a week. When I do sleep, I sleep in a chair. While in, on vacation in Canada, in Canada, I successfully negotiated with a group of terrorists who had seized a small bakery. The laws of physics do not apply to me. I balance, I weave, I dodge, I frolic, and my bills are paid. On weekends, to let off steam, I participate in full contact origami. Years ago, I discovered the meaning of life, but I forgot to write it down. I have made extraordinary force course meals in a toaster oven. I have, I, I breed prize win, winning clams. I have won bullfights in San Juan, cli, cliff diving competitions in Sri Lanka, and spelling bees in the Kremlin. I have played Hamlet. I performed open heart surgery, and recently, I helped a conversation with Elvis I have not yet went to college here's another story in 1941 in a village in Nazi controlled Poland the young man came home to discover that his father had died while he was at work what made his father's death exceedingly more unbearable was that several years earlier, both this young man's sister and mother had died. As he held his father's dead body in his arms, he lamented, I am all alone. 
I'm 20 years old, and I am all alone. I've lost everybody that I love. A person who was writing about this young man says that it was described like this. My life was ripped out of the soil. My life could no longer be what it used to be. The only thing I could pursue that had any meaning was God. And that the life that I pursued did not come without tears. It did not come without what seems to be a certain existential horror. You see, what happens is this. NYU asks, give us a story. The first story seems incredulous, fabled, imaginative, untrue, yet it excites you. Could you imagine if you were the admissions department and you read that letter? <laughs> he's got to be crazy or he's got to be creative. To read it says that obvious this, obviously this young man thinks out of the box. But then the question would be asked, who defines the box? Maybe the young man is not thinking out of the box at all. Maybe he's thinking in a corner of the box that you've never been to. See, who tells us what our boxes are? Who defines our boxes? Maybe the question is not that he's, or the statement is not that he's thinking out of the box. If you asked him, do you think out of the box? He would ask you, there's a box? <laughs> do you understand that what suffering does, what suffering does, the, when, when, when I read this story, it is about a homeless guy who hung out in the subways of New York, who had nowhere to live. They gave him a scholarship. Recently, he wrote a movie called Up and Away. Another one was called Ice Age. See, suffering removes the boxes. The boxes are placed on us and told us to think like this, but... True creativity and true artistry is born out of your suffering. Your suffering gives you a story like no one else's. I tell people all the time, somebody says, somebody needs to do a movie about you. I tell them, baby, I'd have to sell it as fiction because nobody could believe that I could have went through what I went through and I'm still standing here. Do you understand that when you tell some people your story, they look at you like you're crazy because they don't understand what you've been through? Why? You see, suffering can do for us what nothing else in this world could do for us. We are jolted, we are kicked, we are prodded, we are shoved into new realities we never would have been brought about on our own. We are forced to imagine a new future because the one we were once planning is over. Do you understand? Do you get it? Do you get why? Dennis is my friend. The reason I can say that is because we have been through some things together. I called him one day when I was losing everything. It was all going to be gone. And I told him, I need money. I need money now, and I need you to, to loan me some money. And he said, I, he says, I don't know why, but God is telling me to not do it. I hung up the phone, and I was bitter. I said, easy for you. I'm losing five cars and three homes. You about to get in your Mercedes and go to your big, pretty house. Ain't that the devil? Well, I don't like white people. <laughs> Not true. That ain't true. I didn't understand it. See, I didn't understand that what God, when, when, because I know Dennis, and I know that Dennis would have given it to me. He wanted to give it to me. I could he feel the pain in his voice. And the Holy Spirit forced him to say, no, why? Because there was something in me that could only be born through suffering. And if he gave me the money, it would not have helped me. It would have enabled me to stay where I was. And his refusal at that moment forced me to break through into something greater for my do you understand that suffering teaches